Hey everybody, I'm Jim Cuddy from My Homes Media. And I'm Matthew Lynch from My Homes Media. And today, this webinar is, it's, it's a basic overview of video home tours, uh, especially related to real estate, of course, that's the main focus of My Homes Media. Uh, we'll be discussing different equipment, we'll be discussing our shooting process, some things that you should probably look to try and do when you're shooting your own video tours. We'll talk about editing and we'll talk about marketing. Again, really just a brief overview of, of all of the process from start to finish. Uh, if you ever at any time wanted more information about things, we'll probably do some more in-depth uh, webinars in the future on all of the different processes that we, that we go through uh, to complete our home tours. But if you ever have questions on anything, info at myhometomedia.com. If you're watching us live today on the webinar, welcome. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, you, can, you can shoot us an email if you're watching at a later date and you see this because we will post this on our website, myhometomedia.com. But you can always contact us, info at myhomesmedia.com. You can also reach us on Facebook, facebook facebook.com slash myhomesmedia, and twitter.com slash myhomesmedia. Or you can call us. I mean, there's some, <laughs> throw rocks at us, whatever you need to do. But we should probably go ahead and, uh, and get things under the way since we are uh, running just a little bit behind and jump right into it. So we will talk about how to create a video home tour. And I think the first thing that, we'll, that we need to do is kind of ask the question, well, why video? Why a video tour and not just a slideshow? So the first thing, sorry about that, I mean to kick the camera. Uh, the, the first thing you have to understand, why the video tour, not just a slideshow? Video is more engaging. I mean, you're going to capture somebody and keep somebody's attention with video much better than you will with still pictures. Uh, it does emulate the feel of walking through a home in person. Uh, it just gives people a better perspective of things when they can see the video, people walking through it, they can have something that they can relate to. Quality video equipment is affordable. Man, oh man, for years and years and years, you had to either go out and hire somebody at a ridiculous amount of money, uh, or you had to go out and buy just crazy amounts, uh, or spend crazy amounts of money on equipment. No longer necessary. And of course, probably the biggest thing is that it's so easy to share with other people, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, and we'll be talking about social media a little later on too. Um, emailing it to, to your friends, emailing it to other clients, emailing it, the, the folks that you're doing the video for, the homeowner, they're going to email it to all of their family and friends. So it's a great way to kind of spread the word about what you're doing in, in the business. So we'll get started with equipment and what kind of equipment do you need um, we've broken it up into affordable and professional it, and the affordable is really it's 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 your 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 basic things that you would need if you want to accomplish a home tour video the professional side is is really a significant step above we're not talking about making movies in Hollywood but you'll see the difference and we're gonna bring Matt in and have him really talk specifically about this stuff because this is 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 really where where he's his strongest suit is all of the technical things. So, starting with the camera, and we've got a few listed here. Matt, why don't you talk about the differences and and, and what people really need to do? I mean, really, you can go out with your own phone and, and nowadays and, and do a video. Yeah, you can start off if you're if you're looking to do your first one, you can do it on your phone. Most uh, most new smartphones have HD recording capabilities. Um, some, most of them don't have some kind of uh, audio interface that you can tap into. You're stuck with the onboard microphone. There are tons of these HD cameras out there on the market. I've highlighted a few that have an audio input uh, input jack that you can use to <laughs> connect a uh, lapel mic or an external mic, uh, just so you can get both quality audio and good quality video together so you don't have to match it up in editing. Um, we'll talk about sound in, in a minute, um, but this, when you're looking at cameras, you just want to kind of look for those ones that have that audio input just to save you a good hour in your editing uh, process. Okay, so that we move now to sound, and, and this is a pet peeve of mine. Somebody goes out and shoots a beautiful video, and the audio is horrible. It's not watchable, and people won't watch it. They'll they'll turn it off and they'll move on to something else. So um, the basics here: uh, if you're not going to go out and spend a lot of money on, on trying to achieve good audio, what do folks need to do? Um, 
the easiest thing to do is get yourself a simple lapel mic. They can be bought online anywhere from $15 to $40 um, and just directly connect them into your camera using some kind of extension cord. Uh, around this range I also uh, recommend that you can afford some, uh, some wireless microphones. Um, you, around this range you will have problems with electromagnetic interference uh, sometimes and it's a problem in this range because you can't always monitor your your audio source when you're recording because you don't want to be wearing headphones and uh, while you're on on the camera and you also uh, you, so most of the cameras don't offer that so you can use wireless you just have to realize you're taking a risk and uh, so I really uh, recommend just using a simple lapel mic with a uh, uh, with an extension cord and you just have to be creative with how you hide that cord yeah at this level you want to keep it wired no doubt about it alright so moving on to lighting um, for the most part when you go into homes you're going to turn on all the lights anyway uh, you have natural light coming in depending upon the home uh, through the windows. So you don't necessarily need a ton of lighting, but there are times that you do need it, and so let's talk about some of the best options at, at this level. Yeah, when you when you uh, come into a home, and if you're in a house uh, with one of these cheaper cameras, you're going to notice if you don't have enough light, you're going to have grainy film. So if you get a, a simple light panel around $40 or so on, uh, on Amazon, you can raise that level just a little bit um, just to get uh, fill in some of the black areas uh, you can use these to also put light on yourself uh, if you're next to a window so you don't look like a shadow uh, these are really just kind of band-aids for raising the quality up just a little bit um, and we'll see later on that you'll probably want a bigger uh, lighting rig to get really quality uh, video now Stabilizers are, are something that, that a lot of folks might be familiar. You might have heard of the Steadicam. Uh, Steadicam is a brand, much the way that Kleenex is a brand of tissue. But So a stabilizer, and there's a wide range of stabilizers, and we'll talk about that, and you'll see the differences when we move on to the, to the professional as well. But uh, what can people expect? I know we have a tripod on this picture as well. So I, ideally, if you can do everything on a tripod, that's great. But if you're going to walk through a home, you're going to want to have some sort of stabilization. Yeah, I, I love tri uh, tripods into here. Um, you can get a tripod at, at Best Buy for 20 bucks. You can get them, you, know, you may already have a tripod uh, just laying around in your basement somewhere. This is a good way to just hold the camera still if you're talking to the camera so it doesn't look like that Cloverfield effect from that movie back uh, back in the uh, last decade of where people got sick in the theater from it moving around too much. You won't have that effect so much online, but it's something that will just give yourself a, a little bit higher quality video. Um, there are also these uh, small handheld uh, camera stabilizers that use a counterbalance to um, to smooth out the movement when you're walking through a house. Um, they range anywhere from fifty to, to $100. Uh, you can only really use these ones on smaller, smaller cameras. Uh, you can't really put a, a DSLR on these uh, for something uh, heavy. It's based on weight. And if you have a heavy, heavier camera, you are going to want a, a bigger stabilizer. But the, if you have a little handheld camera, a uh, little handy cam or something, these are uh, a good way just to take a little bit of the of the shake out of your out of your shots. Okay. Now Matt just mentioned DSLR, and so what we're going to do here is move to uh, the professional uh, circle when we'll talk about camera sound lighting and stabilizers. And number one in that camera, uh, you'll see there is a, a DSLR, and this is actually one of the cameras that we use. Yeah, this is the Canon T2i. Uh, DSLRs are a great way to get professional looking HD video while still rel being relatively affordable. Um, one of the great things about using DSLRs is that you can uh, exchange the, the, the lenses out of these, um, so you can add wide angle lenses. Um, another great reason to get these is if you had a camera back in your college days, uh, preferably a, a Canon, a lot of those old lenses do fit onto these. One of the downsides to using DSLRs is that you do have a limited amount of time that you can record each, uh, each file. Uh, I think there's like a 4, gig, uh, a four gigabyte uh, uh, limit to the size, so it's probably, depending on your settings, it's between 12 and 14 minutes uh, at a time that you can record. 
but this is uh, this is a great way to get quality, uh, professional quality looking video that won't break the bank. You know, most of the time, I, most professional cameras cost anywhere from you know two thousand to ten thousand uh, dollars. You're not going to be able to tell as easily the difference in quality between a DSLR and those cameras. Yeah, and obviously you can check any of the samples of some of the stuff that we've done at myhomesmedia.com and, and, and see what we've shot with with DSLR uh, if you want an idea. Also, if you have questions, info at myhomesmedia.com anytime, whether that's today and you're joining us live or sometime in the future, if you ever have any questions of anything that we're talking about as we do this overview. All right, so now we move into the more professional levels of sound, the Zoom H4n. Uh, you can see the, a picture of one right there. You can might even be able to see a picture of one in our, because we're using one to pick up our That's audio right. here today. Um, but this is a... a Talk. There, it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Uh, there's the baby. blew it every, out of everybody's ears, but there it is. Uh, so talk about the Zoom and, and where and why would you use the, the Zoom? Um, the Zoom, uh, this is the H4n, and it's uh, kind of the... Um, Swiss Army knife of audio. Um, this is just a great way to get um, if you have more than one people talk, uh, more than one person talking at a time. Uh, you you want to, and you don't have enough lapel mics, or you're just looking for quick audio that's going to be better than the onboard sound card or the onboard microphone on your camera. Uh, this this is a good way to raise that quality up. You can connect uh, external microphones onto it. This is also a great way to connect to your computer after you've done your shooting to do your narration. So it's um, we've heard a lot of or seen a lot of good videos that are ruined by bad narration. You know, they're recorded uh, off the onboard microphone on a laptop, and it just sounds like it's coming from a tin can. Uh, I've actually seen mixes of good audio at the location and bad narration. Um, done after the video is shot, so this is uh, this is an affordable uh, way of getting that higher level of quality, um, and it's I think this the H4n probably retails around two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, the H2 is basically the same as the H4n, except it doesn't have uh, I, I don't think it has the balanced inputs for higher quality microphones, but you can just correct, uh, connect this directly into your laptop. And um, it acts as a sound card, and you can re record your narrations right into your edit software, and you have uh, that just that one step of quality above that. And remember, no bad audio when you're producing a video, please. And all, uh, I have to interrupt also, just our first plug is that uh, My Homes Media also offers narration services. Yes, how about <laughs> that? A, a plug in our own webinar, would you, would you believe it? Um, <laughs> fair enough, we do. We offer, we offer all sorts of things. You can find out about all of it at myhomesmedia.com. All right, uh, so let's now talk about lighting. And here we are stepping up a level, um, and we're talking about the umbrella lighting fixtures. Where do you need this? Where Where is somebody most likely going to, to need this type of a, a lighting setup versus what we talked about on the affordable side? Um, you would need this if you are in a room, a large room that needs a lot of light, uh, or if you're trying to shoot next to windows where the window is in the shot and it's... Uh, blocking out or it's making the rest of the shot look like a shadow. This is a great way to fill in that uh, the, fill in that area with light so you um, so you can see everybody in, in there and not just you know the birds outside the window. Um, these uh, these umbrella lights you can usually pick them up at a, at a Photoshop for about a hundred bucks. Um, these um, these fluorescent bulbs are a great way to fill a room with light. Uh, I found these 250 watt equivalent compact fluorescents uh, that are daylight balanced. Sometimes they're called mood uh, or um, seasonal depression bulbs. Uh, they're for people who have seasonal depression in the morning that they, they need, uh, you know, the equivalent of sunlight to wake up to. That's uh, this, this is a bulb for that. Uh, this will just fill up a room uh, with. What, it, what the camera looks at as sunlight, so it's daylight balanced. You won't have a green looking shot um, or you won't have to adjust your settings for it. So too little light and too much light coming in that you, you, can, you can use to help balance that. Yeah, you just have to look at um, 
make sure you have some kind of balance. Sure. Okay. Now, more professional stabilizers, and it, here you, you see the, the description up there, stabilizer with a full gimbal joint. Um, we're, we're, we're talking about a little bit more money, but, but this one's kind of unique because it's not really a lot of money, but it's, it's offering a lot more than one of the little handhelds. Yeah, I, I love people who innovate. This is from Ballvans Enterprises. Uh, this is about $100, and it's a full gimbal joint. It gives you that really smooth floating camera shot. The one downside to it is that it, it isn't uh, mounted to your body like, uh, like a steady cam. Uh, so it can make your arm tired, but if you're doing a house, you know you you can just. Uh, it usually takes you about half hour to an hour to get your video shots. I think you can deal with it without. You know, steady cam runs anywhere from two thousand to three thousand dollars for the savings that you're putting getting. on the full jacket. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, looking like RoboCop. Uh, this is just a, this is a great way to save some money and get really professional looking shots. Uh, really smooth, uh, stable shots that uh, can travel through a room. Uh, this is one thing that we picked up, and uh, we're so glad we did. Yeah, and keep in mind, you don't need that that big, huge, lumbering, wearing a jacket stabilizer for doing these home tours. You shouldn't. Um, so, all right, now we'll move on to how do I record a video tour. Right here, you'll see on the screen, um, you start the walkthrough of the house, you want it staged correctly. Think of it as an open house. I mean, that's really what we're talking about. You want an open house where the place is clean, everything's picked up, it's, it looks nice, get rid of any clutter, stow away the pets, make sure, and in fact, don't leave pet bowls and things like that around if at all possible. You want all that stuff out of the way. Uh, and, and then also, you want to be taking notes of the areas that you really want to highlight in the video. All right. So, you're going to take still photos and pans of, I guess, pretty much everything, right? Yeah, the the idea is you want to you want to take a picture of anything that you may use in any of your marketing or any of the realtors' marketing. Uh, you just don't want to miss anything. Uh, <clears throat> you want to have photo and video of everything. When we come in, at least when we come into a house, we get a photo and video of anything that we may use. Um, you know, ex uh, external, internal, anything. Uh, even if we know we're not going to use it, uh, we just like to have it. Uh, so when we go through a house, it's first we take our photos. We use uh, one of the good things about having the DSLR is that you can have very high quality photos as well. We use an external flash, just face uh, face the the flash to the ceiling. Take pictures um, from multiple angles in the room, so uh, you don't miss a, a built-in uh, bookshelf or something. And uh, then we do our videos. We use that uh, the uh, the Steadicam or the Balvans. Uh, and get video walking through the house the same way we would when, uh, as if uh, we were the realtor giving the tour. So we try to find the most natural way to get through the house, and we get video of all that. You know, we don't go up the stairs. You know, we uh, that can be edited uh, because you don't want to waste time. Right now, and you also, you know, set up your conversations in the rooms that you really want to showcase. So a lot of times in the homes that we'll go into, it'll be a a renovated kitchen. Okay, or but you know maybe it's a it's an amazing master uh, bedroom suite, or even uh, basements that have been finished, and you know they have big game rooms and, and wet bars and all that kind of thing. My favorite, the wet bar. The, the wet bar, <laughs> right? Yeah, always love the man caves in, 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 in these places. But the key is to is to establish that sense of walking through the home using your words. Okay, so you're going to describe what you're seeing as you walk in the front door, and what you see as you're walking through in the past. So. For an example, and as you see on here, this is kind of an example of the type of, of voiceover that I would do with one of our videos. So as you walk in the front door, you see the family room is to your left. The staircase leads you up to the master bedroom with ensuite bath, two smaller bedrooms, another large bathroom, and on all of these things, you want to space these a little bit. Okay, in your in, when you're doing the voiceover, you want to you, you say that ensuite bath, you pause for a half a beat the two smaller bedrooms, you pause, and it gives the opportunity to, in the edit process, to throw those shots in there. And then as you come back down the stairs, to the right is the large kitchen, which we'll talk about in a minute. I'm teasing that kitchen. They got a little quick glimpse of it, but that's really that wow factor that you want in the video. We want that to, we want to save that for 
end. So you, you, then you move on to the next item as you, after you've teased them a little bit. So you're constantly keeping the, the viewer engaged and engaged and engaged and engaged. And then you hit them with that big one right towards the end. Create excitement about the room. I mean, that you want to showcase on the camera. I mean, that's the whole idea. And you talk about the details, the craftsmanship. It's, you know, maybe it's potential for, as a room for entertaining. Um, and then talk about the land, the surrounding area, you know, the, the walkability, the shopping, the dining, whatever's nearby that, that is going to be uh, important potentially to, to buyers. That's what you want to highlight in that video. And then you want to uh, end with a specific call to action with an easy to remember URL or phone number. And I have, have a graphic that corresponds to the information. That's the most important for the simple fact that some people won't be listening to the audio during the tour. They'll just be looking at the video. So you want to make sure that you have the graphic on the screen that has the way for them to make that extra step to either go to your website or contact you. And also, when, uh, and we'll talk about this in the edit process, but you want to make sure that your, your graphics are large enough to be read on a smaller screen like a mobile, uh, like a mobile phone uh, or in a YouTube video window that's not necessarily going to be full screen. Yeah, you got to keep in mind, you're, you're marketing yourself as well as this home, and so it's extremely important to make sure you're out there as well as a nice presentation of the home, which the homeowner is going to absolutely love. All right, so how do I edit my tour? Uh, oh, no, what am I going to do? Uh, the funny thing is that almost any computer that you go out and buy nowadays it there's a bundled video editing 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 system uh, probably on there and Matt can talk about some that are available yeah we uh, if you have any any device almost you already have some sort of um, video editing software already available to you uh, Windows Movie Maker iMovie on OS X and uh, and iOS and Movie Studio on Android device uh, these bundled video editing systems they offer very limited functionality, but they can get the job done for a simple edit process. Um, if you're looking to just give it that extra oomph, uh, you know, a, a little bit of bling in your video, uh, you might want to move up to you know, the prosumer level of video editing software like uh, Adobe Premiere Elements, Sony Vegas, AVS Video Editor, and CyberLink PowerDirector. These will really give you a little bit better tr uh, transitions. Uh, they'll probably deal with HD video a little bit better. Uh, and then if you want the professional video editing software that, uh, like we use, uh, we use Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, there's really only two options. That's Adobe Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. Okay. Is this all geek to you? Because it is all geek to me, but don't worry about it. Not a problem. You can learn basic editing uh, on, on any of these sites. And, you know, the interesting one here that you put up is the YouTube.com. And you can pretty much find out, if you need to do anything, you can pretty much find it on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, uh, Lynda.com and CreativeCow.net are two places to learn just general editing and and some advanced techniques, but if you have a specific edit that you're trying to do or a specific thing, it's usually faster instead of trying to go through the, the software's help notes just to type in what you're trying to do in YouTube and there's probably at least four different tutorials on how to do it three different ways. Right. And what's this, what's this on the bottom of the screen uh, I This see? will be the second plug of the day. <laughs> that would be uh, My Homes Media also offers editing service. So you know. uh, everything else that we've talked about is usually pretty easy to do on your own. Most uh, That's why it's offered to the to, to the consumer to get uh, to get your uh, camera and your audio and all that stuff, but if you hit a wall with editing, you can send all that stuff to us and we ed edit it for you. Yeah, or if you have questions, again, info at myhomesmedia.com, we'd be happy to answer any questions for you as well. All right, so the editing process. Matt, I think probably the best thing here would be for you to just kind of you know, quickly take us through the steps of, all right, you, you've got all your stuff. What are you doing? How are you throwing that all together? Uh, I can only really give it in general terms just because every edit system is different. So I can just, I really have three, uh, three processes that I go through. First is edit the uh, conversation. Um, just, uh, we usually do a, uh, a co-host or a host and a realtor setup. So we edit that conversation between the two in, in a cohesive manner that flows through the screen, uh, flows through the house, because we don't always shoot them in, uh, in, in, in order. So once we get that, we uh, put that into an, another edit panel. 
um, and we overlay the stills in the room room pans and the uh, the room walkthroughs. So it corresponds with the uh, uh, with the conversation uh, and what Jim. Uh, talked about earlier about leaving this, uh, the pauses, sometimes you have to create a cut there and uh, space it out a little bit so you can give each room its, its, uh, its proper due. Um, then uh, secondly, I add the, uh, just the overlays, um, the contact information, and as I said before, you just want to keep in mind your delivery method. Most of the time it's going to be something like YouTube or Vimeo, which uh, even on a desktop, they're in a smaller window, so you would just want to keep your graphics larger than uh, you would see it on like an NFL game, which keeps it like pencil thin right, or on, right. on a sports uh, sports thing. Because um, especially, you have to keep that in mind when you're looking in your edit window, uh, because a lot of times you're going to have the edit window larger than what it will actually be, uh, what the end user will actually see. All right, now how to market your video. First things first is social networking. Um, and this is pretty obvious nowadays. Pretty much most of you, if not all of you, are on Facebook and Twitter and all these kinds of things. But that's only the first step. You've got to really be active with these things in order to have them working for you. So let's start with Facebook and yeah, you know, just give a quick overview. All right, what, what are some key things that folks need to do to make sure that not only is that video working, you know, is, is most effectively out there. I mean, because just just putting it up to Facebook isn't enough, right? I mean, there are some certain things yeah. you need to do. Uh, and there's a million things you can do on Facebook. Uh, most people know how to use Facebook, and we won't go into all that here. What I'd like to uh, to point out when we're talking about marketing your video is um, how to market it on Facebook. You probably you can upload it to Facebook. You can upload that video file directly to Facebook and people will be able to see it in their timeline. Um, but we found that that's not the most effective way to do that. The most effective way to uh, to maximize the impact is to have it on your own personal website and we'll talk about uh, WordPress websites in a little bit uh, and then have people um, have an effective way of people uh, to get people to link to that video uh, to that website or click through to that website and that's with uh, a good call to action and include your URL in the status update at the top so preferably it's the first thing they, uh, they see keep that status update short uh, and use some uh, some form of catchy image so probably a good uh, photo of the front of the house or if it has a, a magnificent grotto you whatever the wow factor the one wow factor of that house uh, you want to make that the image and so people will click through and want to see more Magnificent Grotto. You really pulled that one out of your hat, didn't oh, you? That's a big word. <laughs> All right. Twitter. Uh, most of you are familiar with Twitter as well, but how are you using it? But here's the other thing, too. You're not, you're not uploading video directly to Twitter, but it's, it's with links. Yeah, you can, I'm pretty sure there are a million systems that you can uh, go sidechain into Twitter. A lot of people play sure. around with that. Again, there are a million things you can do with Twitter. We'll just talk about how to market your video tour using Twitter, and it's basically the same as with Facebook. You don't want to link directly to your video. You want to link direct. Uh, you want to link to a page on your website that has the video in it, but also has some kind of call to action, some kind of uh, email connection, some kind of um, uh, you know email contact, uh, sign up for a newsletter, connect on Facebook, connect on all these other things. Uh, so that you get uh, get people more into your loop of influence. Uh, uh, the same rules apply with Facebook. You want to keep your your link uh, towards the top of the uh, towards the top of the the message. Keep your message short. Uh, this uh, our little cheat sheet here says 120. Uh, everybody knows you have 140 characters, but you should keep it to 120 because I guess at 121 people start snoring. Right. <laughs> and now keep in mind too. All of this information, again, it will be archived on our website. It'll be on our YouTube page. We'll talk about YouTube here in just a second. So um, some of those graphics that Matt had, had put together uh, in this piece are really worth going back and taking a look at. I encourage you to do so. And obviously, if you ever have questions, info at myhomesmedia.com. All right, so YouTube, the granddaddy of, of video hosting. Uh, it's, it's the granddaddy, but it's still the best. Um, 
I meant granddaddy in a good way. I know. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a million things that you can do with YouTube, as I, as, as I say with all these systems. There's a million things you can do, but I'm going to focus on how to best use it for marketing your real estate tour. And the best way to use YouTube is, well, yes, that's where you upload it to, but you, that's where, uh, you also take that video and embed it in your, in your website, um, or on you can have mobile landing pages and all this is just a great way to be able to get it onto any device because you know whether it's uh, Android or uh, or uh, Apple's iPhone or uh, iPad or uh, all the Android tablets or even on desktop all of these systems view YouTube pay, uh, YouTube videos so this is just the best way to do it um, I'll give a little hint here that you want to include a HTTP colon slash slash uh, link at the top of the comments to to that to the number one web page that you want people to do because it's YouTube is a Google property that'll give you some SEO mojo as they say um, and we can go more into that you know on another uh, webinar yeah but so when you are posting it though the HTTP colon backslash backslash in front of where you where you want that uh, that clickable link uh, to yeah. go to. All right, so let's talk about some other sites. Um, Google Plus, a lot of you have probably heard of it. Not sure how many of you are there. We are, and and it's it's very important to be to have a presence on Google Plus. Yeah, same as uh, as with YouTube. Google Plus is Google's baby. So uh, if you put your content on there, it's going to be picked up on the uh, search engines. Uh, you know, and it's going to be weighted more. Uh, when it comes to them looking for the keywords, um, it's the same as same as with Facebook. You know, just use your link close to the top. Use an image. Um, it's basically Google's Facebook. Um, there, are, they use some special SEO things uh, that you know, when you're logged into your Google account or and your friends are logged in and all this, uh, and they do a search and your keyword is there, you'll come up to the top even if someone's been on the web for, uh, someone's had another website for uh, five or ten years. This is a good way to get your video to the top of the, of the results. Um, I'll also talk about Pinterest real quick and I'll zoom in right here. Pinterest is kind of a unique animal in that it is the the biggest network, uh, biggest social network uh, for reaching uh, the female audience. Uh, if you can see here, um, it's 32% female compared to 68% uh, male. When you look at that compared to... All the way to, around. 32% uh, male, 68% male. female. Yeah. Much more heavily weighted towards females. Uh, compared to Facebook, which is 60% male, 40% female. Right. So if you're uh, looking to get to that female audience or looking to get an in on that uh, that audience, that's uh, find ways to use your marketing materials to reach uh, uh, that audience. Yeah, and this is about casting the widest net, right? Reaching as many people as you possibly can, but that can be very, very time-consuming. So, social networking dashboards. Right. We could do an entire webinar just on social networking dashboards, but I'll just give you a quick overview and uh, have you, if you're interested in this, you should probably just check out Hootsuite.com or TweetDeck. I think it's TweetDeck.com. Uh, these are just uh, ways of combining all your social networking into one uh, one area <laughs> that you can send messages to all of your all of your networks. Um, so you just type in one message, preferably with your link at the at the front, um, you know, with an image, um, and send it up to you know Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, uh, Pinterest. Uh, so I don't know if uh, LinkedIn, Google, link, uh, whatever, LinkedIn especially. Yeah. I don't know if Google Plus or Pinterest. Uh, really support any of these yet. Um, just a, it's a great time saver, especially with the calendar function. Uh, if you have things that you once said on your social networking once a week, uh, you know, or on, at specific times, you know, corresponding to events that you're holding, uh, this is just a great way to uh, save yourself some time. You just do it once a month or once every, twice a month, and you don't have to go every day to uh, to type a message onto each and, and all of these different systems. Uh, you always do want to be checking your comments because you don't want to leave a uh, leave a lead behind by uh, not checking your comments. But this is just a time saver. It is really nice. You can sit down for a couple of hours, get all of your messages messages that you want going out for a full month, 
plop it all in there, tell it when to go and you know what to go when, and and you're done. And and so that's really nice. But it does take a little bit of work, but it's it's a lot easier now than than it used to be. All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about websites, and this is important. Word, WordPress websites using a responsive design theme. What's a responsive design theme? Why is it so important? Uh, everything that we've talked about in terms of social networking are all ways that we want people to get their, uh, their circle of influence onto uh, one of these websites. And uh, the best way to be able to serve all of those people I, no matter what um, no matter what uh, you know device they're on whether it's mobile a tablet a desktop even a TV uh, is to use uh, a responsive design themed uh, WordPress website uh, these are media rich and they have plugins that enable um, instant contact through email and social networking so you know you can get someone to come from from your Facebook page onto your website, and then uh, then you preferably get them to become a friend on Facebook. Right. Uh, but these are all. Uh, this is just a quick, easy way. The, uh, these WordPress websites are also easily managed, uh, even if you aren't a, a a coder yourself or a webmaster yourself. If you can use Facebook or Twitter, you can use a WordPress website. Um, so we set these up for for houses. Uh, preferably, what you're doing is you're creating um, a, a web, uh, what's called a um, multi-site uh, page. So you can have your main website, and then for every house that you have, you can create uh, a subdomain. So if you have one two three Good Street uh, is your is your home, you can have one two three Good Street dot you know dot realtor dot com or I am a realtor dot com. Um, so you can have these individual sites for each home uh, that has the video home tour, uh, call to a large call to action button, and uh, easy ways for people to get into your uh, social sphere of influence. All right. So let's talk QR codes and sh short URLs because what we're talking about here is being able to bridge that traditional marketing into your digital domain uh, the, 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 the marketing digital digital marketing doesn't take place doesn't take the place of traditional marketing it enhances it okay and this is one of the ways where you can bring those two together with QR codes and short URLs a good way to use your QR codes are on your printed materials that are being handed out or that are in a public place. Um, people uh, use them with a smartphone. Um, they click on that with their with their QR code app, and it takes them to a URL. That's the simplest way of using it. Now, what you have to make sure of is that where what the URL they're going to is mobile optimized. That's another reason why we like these responsive WordPress templates. Um, so this is just a good way to get people to go from looking at a piece of paper to, you know, sending an email, sending a, a link to a video to uh, a link to a, a house page to a family member, um, you know, s sending uh, an email to you or, um, you know, liking you on Facebook or getting into your social networking, uh, your social networking web. Uh, the other, the other thing to use are shoot, uh, short URLs. Um, it's the same as QR R codes, except you know you have to type them. So you, uh, these are mainly used in Twitter, but they're uh, they're also good to use if you have like a very long URL and you just want to give people an easy way to just be able to type into their phone because not everybody has a QR code uh, app. They can type into their phone. Uh, you know, we have bit.ly slash mhmbhtp uh, that goes to our website. Uh, this is just a, a, a short way of getting people into your um, to your long URLs uh, and uh, the same as QR codes most of the time well, well maybe less to, uh, less of the time they're going to be on mobile um, or they're going to be on tablet so you want to make sure that you're um, you're crafting your web page to be um, optimized for what they're going to be viewing it on. If any of you uh, have took took the opportunity to scan that that, that QR code, you would yep. you would find our uh, 
you would find our website. Yeah, both okay, so together. you can give that give that a shot if you'd like. Does that count as our third plug? It would if anybody happens to do it, yes. <laughs> All right. We'll have to monitor that. <laughs> That's right. A good thing about QR codes and short URLs are also that it, it's a, it's a uh, step between um, an action and your website. So those are also ways to monitor your return on investment. Yeah, you're tracking all this stuff. There, there are ways to track them, so you can see whether your postcard marketing is uh, is getting the most res uh, most results, or if your uh, signage at at the house is getting uh, better results. Yeah. All right. So now, MLS listing. You want your tour to be attached to an MLS uh, listing because then it's viewed alongside all the house information and it's on all the websites that pull their information from that regional database. Uh, here we are in the Mid-Atlantic, we're in the Washington metropolitan area, so MRIS is our, is our MLS uh, regional database. Keep in mind the general rules that apply to, the, to photography do also apply to virtual tours and that is no signage, no agent information, it has to be pretty generic. That's not a big deal. You can you can create two different videos out of one with simple editing. So you can have that video that's promoting you, the agent, and and what you're doing for your customers, as well as having that uh, video tour uh, put into the the MLS. Now, you do need an author an authorized virtual tour vendor to do that for you, and. For our final plug of the day, whether it's four or five, right. I don't I don't know which one it is. Uh, My Homes Media is an authorized virtual tour vendor, so even if you create your own tour, uh, as long as it you know, meets the MRIS guidelines, uh, you can send it to us, and we can upload it in, into onto our website, and it'll uh, and attach it to your listing, so it can be seen on all of those different uh, websites. Yeah, so we can't help you with all of the the databases around the country, but if you are in the area that covers that MRIS covers, we'd be happy to to, to work with you on that. So, well, that concludes our our brief overview of of creating a home video tour, the, the equipment and marketing that video tour. If you have any questions feel free to, to shoot us an email, info at myhomesmedia.com. Of course, you'll find this on our website, myhomesmedia.com as well. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash myhomesmedia. Twitter, twitter.com slash myhomesmedia. Call us, throw rocks at us, whatever you want to do. Stop saying throw rocks at us. Yeah, maybe not rocks. <laughs> I don't like rocks. Thanks a lot. Uh, Appreciate we'll, you joining us. Actually, before that, uh, we'll probably also do some more in-depth uh, uh, webinars in the future so keep uh, keep in our in our circle of influence if you want to know more about uh, when we do uh, editing we may do some marketing webinars in, in the future so if we haven't done it yet um, send us uh, send us a message through any of those systems and uh, maybe we'll, that'll get us to do it sooner all right, all right. Thank you. thanks a lot see you later